Hello everyone and welcome back to Chess Programming Game Design with me. So in the last 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 lesson what we did was well we set up the switch pawn panel board which meant that we have the black pieces white pieces inside of it and what it is well it's basically this and it allows us to choose when a pawn reaches the other side which piece it should become. So today we're just going to start uh, doing some coding on it. The first thing we want to do is add a component to the very first parent of the whole thing. Uh, in my case it's named switch pawn panel. So add a component, new script, um, I am going to call it, what am I gonna call it, piece color display controller. And I'm doing the British spelling of color because that's what I'm used to. You can do either one, it really doesn't matter. And then let's go and edit it. Edit script. And it's going to open up in the same window as our other scripts open up. So what I recommend is pulling it out into its own window because, well, we're going to be working with other scripts as well now. So keep the it's better to keep this separate along with the other things because we're going to be adding scripts to all of the pieces inside of black piece as well as all of the pieces inside of white piece as well and those can be kept in this window uh, by that I mean there are tabs up here and I'm separating that one tab into its own window so that we can add the other tabs into here as well it's like a browser in a way if you want to think of it like that so Inside of here, we don't actually need to add anything to do with um, uh, checking whether there's a click on it. The checking for a click is going to come onto the pieces themselves, which we are probably going to work on in the next lesson. We might just start the scripts today. So today, let's edit this whole thing. So the way I've done it, I've this is my code. And then I've also linked it to my game manager. So let's start off by explaining in here and then I will tell you how I've linked it to the game manager as well. So we have this class which is a normal class it just inherits from Mondo behavior which is the default class in Unity. I have uh, three or four variables if you will inside of it. I have switch pawn panel canvas, I have white pieces canvas, black pieces canvas and a list of all pieces selection. So let's go into our game for just a second here we go and uh, what we can do now is go into switch pawn panel there sh we should get a few things in here now or actually because we have the uh, errors in here we're not going to get we're not going to be able to select what we want those to be but okay so we, for switch pawn, pa pawn panel canvas, we're just going to put this element inside of it. For white pieces canvas, we're going to put the black piece, or the white pieces, sorry, canvas. And for black pieces, we're going to put the black pieces canvas that I have just showed you, shown you here. Inside of all pieces uh, selection, what we do on awake is go through pawn to piece on click, j in this dot, so we go through this list and when we go through uh, this this list which is the get component in children which are of the object time pawn to piece on click we will create that and I will tell you what it is in just a second I add it so pawn to piece on click is the name of the class which all of the these pieces are going to contain because we, we need that class so that we know which piece we're clicking on. And that's actually going to be the parent class, but just like we've done with piece, we, uh, these are going to inherit from it, so it's going to have the same functionality. And so we basically add all of these into our uh, all pieces selection list that we create inside of here. And that happens on awake. Uh, which is which means that it's it happens right as the program starts. Uh, I believe that this is important in this case because otherwise it's going to be 
to happen uh, mid game, which we don't exactly want to happen. We want to load this straight away. And it's going to happen mid game because at first switch one panel, as I've said, is disabled. And that's the way it's supposed to be. But with awake, it works differently. Um, so we will create pawn piece on click later on. Uh, for now, hopefully that makes sense. It's just going to be a class that all of these are going to have. And it's going to register the click and do some other things as well, but don't worry about that for now. Then we have another method as well, which is called black pieces handler. Similarly, we have the white pieces handler. So in the black pieces handler, what we do is get the black piece canvas. So that we put in here, which is basically just uh, this canvas here that I'm showing you. And what we do to it is, well, First of all, we set it active. Uh, we are going to control this through the game manager. So once we call this method uh, from the game manager, what happens is, and uh, this is only going to be called when it's black's turn, when black reaches the uh, the white's to uh, lay uh, what to call it, the white's first row. So when a black pawn reaches this row, this event is going to be triggered from the game manager, and what this method does is well first of all we take the location of pawn where it's being moved to so that we know where we're going to need to be changing the piece or the pawn to another piece and we pass that to set location of pawn uh, location of pawn so i will explain that in just a second so first of all we set it to true that means that after we've made this visible we also make black pieces visible allowing oh this is odd uh, I guess the anchors didn't work the way we wanted them to. Okay, uh, no big worry for now. So this shows up. We are allowed to click on one of the pieces to select. Uh, so this shows up and that allows you to do that. Then with the for each loop, I go through all of the pawn to piece on click, which is our class that I've mentioned before, in pieces selection in the list which we have created. And we do j dot set location of pawn so what this does or will do once we actually create the class i don't know why it's not giving me an error here it should really be giving me an error because this method is non-existent at this point but that doesn't matter so what it's going to do is tell uh that tell the uh, script inside of these components where the pawn is located hence as passing location of pawn so that the handler on the uh, on the row image in our case or the script that we're going to put in the row image which is going to be of the class pawn to piece on click is going to know where to deploy the piece uh, that we have selected of course then after we pass that to there that's going to take care of everything and then we come back to this and we do switch pawn to panel uh, canvas set active true so first uh, we do this first of all true so that there's no delay between uh, this becoming visible and this becoming visible once this becomes visible all of the elements that are supposed to be visible are already visible so it's going to be instant for the user otherwise there might be a small delay uh, a human would probably not be able to notice it but we want to do it this way just to be on the safe side similarly we do that on for the white pieces handler we call it when it's white's turn and then uh you can also see returning to normal what this does is basically just set everything to disabled so that it's invisible and we do that at the end of each turn so after we have clicked the piece the piece appears on the board then the panel uh, the switch pawn panel becomes disabled as well as these inside of it also becoming disabled I did both white and black disabled or set active false at the same time because well I don't want to make two different methods to do pretty much the same thing so it doesn't matter if it's false it, nothing's going to happen if it's true then it's going to become false so there's nothing to worry about there so actually, instead of me just talking about this class, why don't we also create it? Uh, we can put it in one of these. In one of them, it's enough for now. So we're going to call it pawn to 
piece on click. Oops, uh, that's supposed to be a lowercase n. Create and add. There we go. Let's also edit it. And that's fine, no problem. Um, there we go. As you can see, it's opened in this window. I'm going to keep it here because this is where I want it to be. So inside of here, similarly to what we've done for the pieces, we needed to inherit from the eye pointer down handler as well as mono behavior so that we can register a click. We also need to be using two more libraries and at the bottom we also add a on pointer down method. Again, like we've done for the pieces. Uh, this method is going to, we are just going to add it right now. Um, in just a second, let me find what I am actually looking for. Because that's actually the wrong thing, isn't it? Yep, that, that was the wrong thing. I copied it from Square instead of where I meant to copy it from. So I will explain this, it's all fine. Uh, let me just copy this and paste it. Over here. So we have the on pointer down. This is basically as we've done for the pieces. When you click on it, so when you click on the queen, for example, here, this is called replace pawn location of pawn. And well, uh, I haven't perfected this yet. Uh, I have an idea of how I'm going to do it, but this is an outline of what the class is going to look like. Private square location of pawn equals null at first because, well, it doesn't have any information yet. And, well, it's going to have the information for when it needs it. When it doesn't need it, nothing's going to happen. Public, then we have piece color display controller, which is this class. And in our, uh, where is it? We, we just make this to be this. Uh, we do that inside of here. So hopefully it's going to allow me, ah yes, as you can see, yep. So as you can see here, I am now allowed to select something here. And what I'm going to select is go on scene and select the only switch pawn panel. Because, well, this is the only switch pawn panel script that is existent in my whole game. And I just select it. And that's this. Let's just save it. Uh, we can now actually do the same for this and select switch pawn panel controller. Uh, just select itself. Um, let me just find it now. Uh, switch pawn panel. There we go. White pieces canvas. We can also select the black piece, the white pieces. Why am I inverting those today? I have no idea. And here also the black pieces. Make sure that you are taking these from the scene and not from the assets because. If you take them from the assets, then nothing is going to happen. You want them to be on the, uh, from the scene, so that the things on the scene actually change. So now let's get back to this. Uh, as I told you, this comes from this instance uh, that we have inside the switch pawn panel, so that shouldn't be confusing. So once the piece is clicked, replace pawn, location of pawn is called. So let's just find that. Where is it? It's over here. Uh, public virtual void, which means that we can override it and we will override it because, well, we have eight different pieces that can be inherited. So we are going to override it in each piece, but this is just the idea for now. And the piece color controller dot returning to normal. So for now, that's all I have uh, here. It's it just comes into here and then returns everything to normal. We, I have no change added yet in, yet in here because I need to figure that out, but I just wanted to put this class in here so that we don't get any errors for this. Everything else you can just ignore for the time being. So now that we have that, let's go back to the game manager and actually add a bit of functionality at least. So in this else if that we have created, which is for now only blank, uh, this is for the white uh, piece change. What we want to add is, well, I want to add a debug.log first, just to make sure that this is being entered and everything is working correctly, and to be able to debug things more easily if it isn't. Then, well, we want to call normal piece move, because, well, the pawn just does a normal move. 
there's nothing uh, special about the move or do I not have that kind of function here oh I have I just have normal piece movement okay that's fine we just move the pawn like we would normally we actually also before that change last piece moved was whatever the current piece selection is there we go and then lastly we call the switch pawn panel with the argument of the square which we just have so switch pawn panel oops this is actually for the black we need white pieces handler over here and actually I need to change that again there we go so ignore the errors for now that's fine uh, switch pawn panel dot white pieces handler so we call the white pieces handler in the switch pawn panel which I showed you what it does just a second ago and then we select this square uh, this square is just where the pawn has been moved to there's nothing special about it we could probably just put uh, current square selection as well there that will probably be the easier way to do it so switch pawn panel what is this uh, it's just uh, the same as we've done with the uh, pieces and we just have it at the top and we select it through our game interface there we go and now we go to here main canvas we should find that here um, switch pawn panel there we go and now we can just select that and we shouldn't be getting any errors now just to quickly make sure that everything is working properly uh, let me just fix this uh, so that it looks nicer in just a second so in the last video what I forgot to mention although I made a an editing error by adding an extra clip at the end along with that what you also need to do is make sure that the background as you can see the anchors are in the middle as well you need to put the anchors of the background to the corners of well said background so let's just do that and if you do that now everything should resize properly let's just make sure there we go it resizes properly now well as properly as you can get with the pieces there we might change how the pieces behave as well but for now we should be fine because they are shrinking and expanding the way we want them to be uh, well okay I, I think I see the problem with the pieces so black pieces as you can see the anchor we've put the anchors at the corners of the parent we don't want to do that we want to put the put that at the corners of the pieces we do that now hopefully it resizes no okay well let's just leave it for now as I said that's no big problem um, so let's see what actually happens if we try to play the game uh, let's disable that because that's how a normal game would start I just want to bring a piece to the other side of the board and then see how things turn out so good everything's happened so far that we've expected to happen the we can't see the black pieces the white pieces we can't see if we click on one of these well the white pieces don't actually have any of the script so we're probably going to just get an error now let's go into the console good we've seen oh black piece change this should be white piece change I've probably just copied and pasted it that's why and oh actually we don't get any error because there, there is no recognition of a click uh, let's try the black pieces now uh, and see how that turns out because well we have added a bit of functionality to the black pieces or at least to I believe this is the yeah the black rook we have added the functionality to that oh okay we're not actually allowed to take the square so let's fix that it's going to one of these which is the correct one let's play a bit of roulette and guess that this is the one and it is the one 
So let's go back to our else if normal piece movement. Um, is it because of this? Might be because of that. Let's put it there. And see what's gonna happen now. This is annoying me. There. Because the black pawn should be able to take the other side. I don't know why it wasn't. Or maybe I just wasn't clicking it correctly. But I don't think that that was the problem. No, I, I'm definitely clicking it. Okay, let's see. And I just remembered that we never actually added the functionality, did we? So this is why. Um, nope, that's the wrong one. No. No, is it? Oh, it is the right one. So inside of our else ifs, we added functionality to the black, well, this should really be white piece change because white pawn. And then what we do is, well, just copy this and go into here, paste it, call black pieces handler and current square selection. And that now should be fine. It should allow us to move the pawn to the other side. And once we do that, we also should be able to click on the rook at least and see the effect of that. Good. We haven't had a piece change. However, as you can see, the panel disappeared. And we now know that the click has been registered, meaning that in the next video, we can work on changing the piece a bit more. So what I am going to do right now, well, actually nothing, because, well, I want to make eight more classes, which are going to inherit from our new class, which we created, a pawn to piece on click. So I'm going to actually do that on camera. I'm going to create eight classes, call them pawn to piece on, and then whatever it is. So white bishop, for example, or black rook, uh, black queen, white queen, and so on. So I'm going to have four black ones and four white ones and make them inherit from pawn to piece and I will see you in the next video with those already uh, being prepared before I go I'm going to move these into scripts so that they're easier to find so if you enjoyed this video then please give me a like share and subscribe uh, otherwise do tell me how I can improve for the next video other than that once again thank you so much for watching and goodbye